can't tell by the way that I'm dressed. Uh, I'm a little behind. I had a very busy day at work and I'm gonna do this one as a sort of cut as you are video because I need to get caught up. <laughs> Let's go ahead and dive right into the discussion of one of the only cocktails that became a modern classic that may have been entirely an accident. The Gold Rush on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hi there, ho there, my name is Michael, I'm a bartender from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and a home mixologist, and today uh, I am going to share with you one of the funniest modern classic cocktail stories I think I have ever heard. Put yourself in the shoes of somebody who may work in restaurants, but they themselves are not a bartender or a mixologist or even the owner and proprietor of a bar. That would make you Mr. T.J. Siegel, who walked into Milk and Honey in New York City in 2001 currently being owned and operated by Sasha Petrosky, and asked for his usual whiskey sour. <laughs> At the time, Sasha was working on recreating a Prohibition-era cocktail called the Honeysuckle Daiquiri, and had some honey syrup set aside to experiment with that. In the process of ordering this drink, T.D. Siegel suggests, oh hey, go ahead and put some of that honey syrup in there, let's see what that tastes like. And a modern classic was born. <laughs> I'm not joking you, that is how the Gold Rush, one of Milk and Honey's most famous cocktails, uh, had, had came to be created. Somebody suggested the very simple substitution, and that was it. <laughs> and now you can find it on bars, er, bars everywhere, cocktail books, it is a staple of the modern mixological world. And I find that so beautiful, because it was just such a simple story of, oh hey, that sounds kind of good. Yeah, I throw that in there. <laughs> So let's go ahead and make a gold rush right now. Shaking cocktails, we're gonna grab our cocktail shaker here. To get it out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and make my own personal recommendation off first here. Uh, one dash of orange bitters. Not part of the original recipe, but I do think that it is a nice addition. Honey and orange play together well, especially when they're also paired with lemon and the sort of cool flavors in the bourbon we're gonna use are going to be pretty good here lined up with that. We're gonna come behind that with some honey syrup. I am using a three to one honey syrup today. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce. This in particular is an orange blossom honey, which does give it some slightly different character from a clover honey or an acacia honey. I don't think Sasha specifies anywhere in the writings on this cocktail what kind of honey to use, but if you wanted to play with it slightly and in very subtle ways, different honeys would yield different flavors. So you could go for that. So I'm gonna take a lemon here, and we'll squeeze out three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Pour that right on in. Lastly, we need to come behind this with some bourbon. And you want a particularly high quality bourbon, but something without too heavy an age statement. I'm actually going to use uh, Evan Williams Bottle and Bond. This is a bourbon whiskey from Kentucky, bottled by Evan Williams. Bottle and bond whiskeys have a minimum four year age statement in a bonded warehouse, following strict guidelines for the quality of their product and the content of their mash bill. Very reliable whiskey that is also remarkably cheap for being bottled and bond at only $20 around where I am, ranging up to about 25. We'll measure out two ounces of that and pour that in. Next up, we gotta add some ice. One cube whole and one cube cracked. Ooh, she exploded. That was fun. We'll go ahead and cap that up, tap that down, and shake for 10 to 12 seconds to fill and combine. Now a gold brush is actually a sour that is served on the rocks in a double glass. So we're gonna grab one here, and I'm gonna top that up with a reasonable amount of fairly large sized ice. A restaurant quality pebble ice would actually be perfect here, but uh, make do with what you got. Honestly, if you have large cubes like I do, just crack two of those in there and that'll get the job done as well. Take our cap off, grab our strainer, and pour that cocktail right on in. And there's a couple different ways you could garnish a gold rush. In theory, because we're using some orange bitters, we could do it some orange peel, but I'm going to follow the recommendation on Difference Guide. I'm gonna take just a piece of the lemon peel off this wedge here and express that over top. That gets discarded. And I'm gonna grab a wedge here as well. Got a slit in that and place that on the rim like so. And that, ladies and gentlemen, 
is our gold rush. Alrighty, got our station organized and some of the ice cleared away. Let's go ahead and give our drink a sip. Cheers. Mm. Oh man, that is so delightful. <laughs> so you're getting the typical whiskey sour sort of impact of oak and vanilla and honey notes. This bourbon in particular, the Evan Williams, I would actually describe as a more dry bourbon. Generally, you can find sweetness in a lot of bourbons. This one's much more dry, roasted peanuts and, and tobacco notes with some of those more common whiskey flavors of honey and vanilla and oak and some light cherry. Uh, it's towards the back a bit. It, this is playing well here though. It's giving it this nice sort of complex evolution that you would find in a good old fashioned or a good more traditional whiskey sour uh, or whiskey shaken cocktail like a smash. The lemon juice is obviously playing well with the bourbon as well. And it's bouncing that complexity uh, off of the honey as well by giving it some life and some vibrancy. The honey here is giving it this really nice, rich, sweet characteristic that is not functioning the same way that a regular simple syrup would. It's giving it this kind of floral undertone to it. Um, and while I can't necessarily detect that this in excuse me, in particular, is an orange blossom honey, I wouldn't be surprised if a clover honey read slightly different and then you'd be able to tell. It's delightful. It's, it's complex in the way that it is still approachable. Something that is subtly different and introduces a different flavor to your palate than what you would normally expect. And one that is not noteworthy, uh, pairing well with the bourbon and the honey. I mean, honey lemon, great combo, honey bourbon, makes great sense. There's a lot of uh, like commercially available honey flavored bourbons out there. I don't know why that's the case. Bourbon already tastes like honey if you know what tasting whiskey is like, I don't know. It's, it's a really, really great drink. And for being created basically by accident by someone who is not a mixologist to become a modern classic at the milk and honey as a result is crazy. It is the perfect example, I think, of what makes this particular field of culinary arts so much fun. A subtle variation may not seem particularly noteworthy on paper, but once you put it in the glass and prepare it with the correct technique, you're left with something that you genuinely want to share with as many people as you can. And that is exactly what the Gold Rush is. Very short and sweet episode today. There's not much to talk about here, honestly. We've spoken about the milk and honey previously, kind of brief, you know, briefly, um, as one of the f uh, few bars that is unfortunately no longer around um, that restarted the cocktail, well, not restarted, but started the cocktail renaissance uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s. This being one of those premier cocktails that they are known for um, makes it that much more important, I think, not just from a historical perspective, but from um, the perspective of showing how important it is that we understand how to put spirits together to make new creations. Uh, as, as simple and, you know, from the outset, maybe, uh, unimpressive as they may be. So, we're going to finish this episode off with a reading from our book, Crisp Toasts, as we always do. Last week, we moved on from the section on accountants, or no, the section on action to adolescence. And our following quote from today's episode goes as such. To adolescence, that period when children feel their parents should be told the facts of life. Cheers. For a split second, I thought I was reading the one from last episode. But no, that's different and that's funny. <laughs> I like that one. Thank you all again so much for watching. If you enjoyed, click the like button down below and subscribe to catch more episodes of the show. I make the show every single Friday and sometimes on Tuesdays, so you can always tune in on those dates to find the new shows. But if not, you can always click that little bell notification to be told when I upload. I'm also on other various social media, which are either appearing on the screen now or have been on the screen for some time. Uh, and really, I don't use them all that much. I'm on Instagram and uh, TikTok the most, like second and third in that order nowadays, but really, I'm just on YouTube, so if you live here, so do I. You're welcome to stay. <laughs> and that is all for today. So if you guys enjoyed, do all that good stuff, I will see you in the next episode. Please remember to drink responsibly and have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. <laughs>